Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday, May 3rd, a town board legislative meeting. If you please would like, I'd like to call this meeting to order. If you'd please um, rise and, and say the pledge with me. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Will our clerk please call the roll? Draw. Here. Cole. Here. V. Here. Akadin. Here. Thank you. Next order um, of business is our communications and announcements, and we'll start with our town clerk, Amy Steckloff. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we were excited to announce Almost Maine as the spring main stage production presented by the Penfield Players. This charming play, written by John Cariani and directed by Tom Bijangiari, explores love in the humorous and heartwarming way that will leave you enchanted. Join us at the Penfield Community Center, located at 1985 Baird Road, for an unforgettable experience. The show will run from May 7th through, I'm sorry, May 5th through 7th and May 12th and 13th, and tickets will be av available for purchase starting the week of April 3rd, so obviously it's been going on for a while. Advanced ticket prices are at $14, while $17 for the tickets available at the door. Groups of 10 or more can purchase tickets for $12 each. Uh, save the date and get ready to be swept away uh, by Almost Maine, and we can't wait to see you there. My next announcement uh, is that come and join the Penfield Trails Committee on May 13th at 9 a.m. for an enjoyable hike at Harris Whalen Park located at 2126 Penfield Road. If you're a nature enthusiast who loves exploring beautiful woods and learning about glacier geology, then this event is perfect for you. Our knowledgeable guide will provide you with a wealth of information. The event is free, but you need to register in advance. To reserve your spot, please visit Penfield Recreation's official website at www.penfieldrec.org or call 585-340-8655. And lastly, the Penfield Art Association's latest exhibi exhibition is now open to the public at the Penfield Town Hall. The show, show, or the show showcases 22 paintings from six talented PAA artists, that's the Penfield Art Association, Pat Gow, Nancy Mallow, Bob Winter, Shelley Simpson, Kay Litcherdell, and Yu Kinney. Don't miss the chance to see these stunning works of art in the town hall lobby until June 30th, 2023. That's all I have. Thank you. <clears throat> Councilperson Akadan. Thank you. I do have a few tonight. Um, the town will be having our second brush drop-off event on May 20th from 7 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Be located at our DPW garage at 1607 Jackson Road. Uh, many items that um, will be accepted this year pertain per particularly to branches and shrubs. Um, not accepted, should be noted, are large stumps, leaves, grass clippings, concrete, other debris. Uh, that will not be accepted at this particular event. Um, you can visit our website for further uh, information. Again, it's gonna be at 1607 Jackson Road, DPW. There will be staff on site uh, to assist you and guide you through the process. Uh, secondly, fire safety reminder to our residents, um, open burning of any kind is not allowed in the town of Penfield. This includes leaves, brush, construction debris, garbage, and rubbish. Recreational fires, however, are permitted, but must only burn clean seasoned firewood and be attended for recreational purposes only. Please keep the fire at most three feet in diameter and two feet in height. And just remember, there's an increased risk of wildland fires this time of year. For more information, you can contact our fire marshal's office uh, here at the town hall. Um, you can also visit penfield.org backslash safety. And Memorial Day, May 29th, just a notice that our town offices will be closed on that day. Um, this includes the town hall, Department of Public Works, Community Center, and court. 
That is it. That Thank, is it. You. Thank you, sir. Councilperson Cole. Okay, I have a proclamation and then several announcements. The proclamation is it's National Preservation Month, May 2023, whereas um, May is National Preservation Month, whereas this month provides a great time to reflect on the important role historic preservation plays is not only Penfield, but in communities throughout the U.S., and whereas the town of Penfield is rich in history dating back to its founding in 1810, and whereas Penfield is home to many historic sites, including those which prominently sit within the town's historic district, and whereas it's important to celebrate our history and recognize the efforts of those in our community who work hard to preserve our history and tell stories of the past, and whereas the list includes our town historian, our local history room, and historic preservation board, and whereas we thank these individuals for their work and dedication as we celebrate historic preservation, and be it further resolved, the Penfield Town Board proclaims May 2023 as National Preservation Month. This is dated May 3rd and signed by our Deputy Supervisor, Debbie Draw. My announcements are the Penfield Symphony Orchestra's concert is coming up for the springtime celebration, May 15th at 7.30 at the Penfield High School. Tickets are now available at penfieldsymphony.org. There's a plant sale. Penfield Community Victory Garden is having a plant sale on Saturday, May 20th from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Penfield Community Center. The Pen Friends of the Public Library are having a young adult and children book sale. Friday, members only, May 5th, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, May 6th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday, May 7th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And finally, the 31st Annual Charity Golf Tournament, which includes the Town of Penfield, Penfield Rotary, and Penfield Kiwanis, is being held on Monday, June 12th from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's sponsored by these three organizations for the purpose of this charity tournament, generate funds to assist those in our community, especially children who find themselves in need of food, shelter, and comfort and healing. What's unique about this tournament, it's 100% of the net funds raised will go directly to those in need. So grab your golf clubs and join us for a day of fun, networking, and philanthropy. To register as a sponsor or a golfer, please visit www.penfieldparringtonkiwanis.org slash golf tournament. Don't miss the chance to make a difference in the lives of those in the community. And I believe it's also on the Penfield website because Penfield is one of the sponsors of this golf yeah. tournament. So I actually it. have Thank a you. team. I'm very excited. I, I hope helping. it's a beautiful. I don't golf. I hope I'll be it's helping, a, but you, you'll be helping. You're the golfer. I, I can't wait to. <laughs> hope it's a nice day. Councilperson yes. Lee. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. We appreciate your attendance today, and thank you again for participating. As the town staff offices or offices and staff will be closed on Memorial Day, the town of Penfield will be hosting its annual ceremony of remembrance that day at 10.30 a.m. at the Penfield Amphitheater. This year, we are proud to feature guest speaker Min Tuan Richard Nguyen, a Rochester native and distinguished graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy. He served as the International European and African Operations Manager at Commander Task Force in Naples, Italy, where he coordinated all submarine and special operations for NATO and our allied partners in the European and African theaters from 2020 through 2022. He currently serves as the Director of Scholarships and Officer Programs for Western and Central New York. If you'd like to participate in the presentation of roses during that ceremony, please contact Sabrina at the phone number there, 340-8651, to reserve your rose honoring a fallen military member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I have a couple proclamations here tonight and a couple announcements. Uh, the first proclamation, I was honored to be able to um, celebrate the Bry Penn Senior Rides in April 2023 uh, with a, a luncheon that was held here in Penfield. Um, the Bry Penn Senior Rides uh, exemplifies all that's great in our communities by providing invaluable service to residents in Penfield and Brighton. And this volunteer-based organization offers seniors 65 years of old and free rides to 
medical appointments and religious uh, services. This organization also provides transportation for seniors to visit family members in the hospital and nursing homes. And this service has assisted countless seniors since its inception. And so we greatly appreciate the work of our dedicated volunteers to make this program possible. So on behalf of the Penfield Town Board and the entire Penfield community, we extend a thankful, a heartfelt thank you um, to um, Bri Penn Senior Rides for all that you do for us in our community. Thank you. And my second proclamation here, I was honored on um, this past Saturday at the electric vehicle um, event at the Penfield Community Center to present with them the, main, um, the mayor's monarch pledge. Um, and this, is, uh, this is, was an important part. The Penfield Town Board recognized that the monarch butterfly is an iconic North American species whose multi-generational migration and metamorphosis from caterpillar to butterfly has captured the imagination of millions of Americans. And whereas both the Western and Eastern monarch populations have seen significant declines, with less than 1% of the Western monarch population remaining, while the Eastern population has fallen by as much as 90%. So whereas the Penfield Town Board recognizes that human health ultimately depends on well-functioning ecosystems and that biodiverse regions can better support food production, healthy soil and air quality, and can foster healthy connections between humans and wildlife. And whereas these pollinators play an important role in maintaining a healthy ecosystem, local plant <coughs> species, wildlife, and urban agriculture all depend on pollination from bees, butterflies, and other insects. And pollinator species are in a decline due to habitat loss and the use of p pesticides, causing species like the monarch butterfly to decline significantly in the past 25 years. And whereas the town of Penfield will continue to support local, state, and national efforts that protect, restore, and conserve habitat for pollinators, as well as to foster a greater connection between residents and wildlife. And so on March 15, 2023, in the town of Penfield signed the National Wildlife Federation's Mayor's Monarch Pledge and have officially committed to taking meaningful action to protect the monarch butterfly. The town is committed to working with Color Penfield Green and Healthy Yards Monroe to complete the installation of a pollinator-friendly garden at the Penfield Community Center. Whereas every resident of Penfield can make a difference for the monarch by planting native milkweed and nectar plant plants to provide habitat for the monarch and pollinators in locations where people live, work, and play and worship. The town of Penfield is committed to reviewing mowing practices to preserve meadow areas in town parks and to incorporate monarch butterfly conservation into the comprehensive plan update. Um, therefore, I, um, Debbie Draw, and by the power of vested in me as deputy town supervisor, do hereby com, uh, proclaim that Saturday, April 29th, 2023 was May Mayor's Monarch Pledge Day, and I would encourage all res residents to participate in activities that support and celebrate um, the monarch and all the pollinators. And that will go into the town record. Um, my next announcement here is um, I'm excited to bring a customer service pop-up event from RG&E here to the Penfield Town Hall. It will be this Tuesday, May 9th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, there will be RG&E customer service reps available to assist, assist, assist customers. Um, it will be in the parking lot behind the Penfield Town Hall, again from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. So you please come with any questions, answers, um, and they'll hope they'll help you customers with um, your bills and any questions you should have. And then I wanted to again appreciate um, everyone tonight for showing up. I, I think I know why many of you are here. Um, we've received a lot of public input um, on a resolution that's in our um, in our packet tonight uh, to discuss, which is. Um, 23T119, um, which is the authorization to, authorization to advertise for sealed proposals for the development of a bathroom, parking lot, and pickleball courts at the Shadow Pines property. And at this time, I'd like we we'd like to um, I'd like to to take a look at to remove this from tonight's. Um, resolution packet. We'd likely look to have a public hearing um, where we'll have staff, board, um, and the public could come with, for input for questions, concerns on this project in the Shadow Pines property. So at this time, um, it will be removed from, um, from our agenda tonight. And that, Madam Clerk, I... I, I so 
I want to, if we can go back for a second before we go on to public participation, mm -hmm. I think it's important to note, now that we have a, uh, this is uh, National Preservation Month, I thought I would take a moment and let the town know that we've been working on a, a uh, historical preservation project for several years now. Um, we started in 2017, where I collected our Oakwood Cemetery uh, records, Smith Road Cemetery records, marriage uh, records, and our town board minute uh, records. And we have been preserving those on special safety paper, paper that uh, will never be destroyed. So the special process we've been going through. And so that was our first project. Our second project started last year. And that project is a four-year project. And we are in the process of preserving uh, building and zoning per, uh, building and zoning minutes and our planning board minutes. So this is a project that we you know, close, uh, hold, uh, hold dear to our hearts. And so it's apropos to mention it, being that this is National Preservation Month. Pr great, thank, thank you, you so much. How wonderful. Next item on the agenda is public participation. I'm probably, a number of people have signed up to speak, Madam Clerk. Yes, uh, the first one I have is Jim Frum. Good evening, Jim. One page, it's going to be short. Okay. You can breathe easy. <laughs> have a, welcome, have a seat. Again, will you state your name and your address yeah. again for us? Uh, my name is Jim Froome. I uh, reside at 11 Denonville Ridge. Uh, first, I'd like to, because I haven't done this very much, but I'd like to recognize and thank not just you, the board, but the town staff for everything you guys do. And also for, you know, especially the work for two and a half years or whatever it's been on this project. Um, and I guess we go back about six years altogether on the Shadow Pines mm -hmm. project. Um, my hat's off to you, the board members, for doing something that most of us would never want to do. <laughs> we we kind of know it's a thankless job. And again, thank you. Um, I'm going to start off with something that's going to make you happy. Um, which I already showed you, but I've, I've, I've kept this to one page. Uh, you've heard most of the things I've had to say over the last three years, so there's really nothing new to add. I just want to make sure that my position is clear, both as the person promoting or one of the people promoting the pickleball courts and also as one of the first people that got involved in uh, pushing back on the housing development when they wanted to sell it for, for 400 houses or whatever it was. Um, I lived on the courts for over 30 years. I live about a half a block away now. Um, I watched it more from cornfields to a golf course with the planting of so many trees and now to a town-owned property that most see as wooded parkland. It's a calming effect that counteracts the trucks, the dust, and the dynamite booms that we get from the quarry. And we don't get nearly as many as we did, you know, 20 years ago. But um, and. This is a side, you know, the driving by the quarry when I bought my house, I didn't even know there was a quarry there because you drove through the woods and then you got to the Clark House. So it was kind of a surprise when we heard our first boom. Um, I have yet to talk with one person who would like to see the tree line along Atlantic look like the corner that we now see at Whalen and uh, Clark. Uh, there's many unhappy people. Uh, there were many unhappy people when all those trees were cut down without input from town residents. I've never had a conversation with anyone that would like to see Shadow Pines have open space fields similar to Rothfuss. The planted trees there are roughly 20 years old and it's still a windswept field with little shade for park goers. My hope is to have the pickleball courts built and laid out properly and also have them fit into the property, keeping a park-like setting. This means with as little interruption to the trees and landscape as possible. I say this both as a pickleball player and a, and a Shadow Pines parkland enthusiast. Pickleball needs the trees for wind blockage and shade, and the parkland people want the visuals in the shade. 
I felt since first seeing this master plan that there is too much land being cleared and too many mature trees being taken. I'm aware that there are reasons for doing it this way, but I hope tonight the board will realize maybe it's time to take a pause and look into some alternatives that would satisfy both the pickleball crowd and the people who want to save Shadow Pines to stay primarily as a wooded parkland. If the narrative from those advising the board stays the same in regards to clear cutting an area and replanting such a large area, I hope you will consider getting a second opinion from townspeople or other professionals as to the cost and time frame for making some changes. This also applies to moving the whole development under the bank of pine trees on Atlantic as per the illustrations. You probably haven't saw them, seen them, but I, I sent them to you about four o'clock today. We saw them. You did, okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also like the board to consider putting the rec field on a second or third development stage, similar to what you are considering with the playground. Leave the land as is for now and just develop the seven to eight acres it would take to construct the courts, bathroom and parking, and that area for the um, playground. We have two parks and three schools within a mile and a half of this location, all with recreational fields and three with playgrounds. Feel free to reach out if you'd like some help. Free is always affordable. Again, thank you for your work on this project. I hope you will consider delay on the bid vote so you can consider some lesser intrusive ideas and I think you just announced you did, so thank you for that. Thank you. Mr. Finn, thank you so thank much you. for being here and, and your note and um, sharing your thoughts. I think you've been very vested in this project and even though your, your emails and, and sessions are always very, we can have robust discussion and there might be times that we passionately disagree, but you've always been very respectful and civil and it's really a lot easier to hear what you're saying when you're not screaming, you know? So I appreciate you being here, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next, I have Jane Grace Taylor. Welcome. Hello. Hi. I'm Jane Grace Taylor, 624 Gravel Road in Webster, actually but I play pickleball all over the area. And uh, I just wanted to point out the importance of this project. Uh, I have three groups on my phone right now uh, from Team Reach. They started out with uh, about 100 in each last summer. And uh, the number is up to 1,670 now just for the three groups. That's uh, Victor, um, Ellison area, and, uh, and Webster, the three. So that's oh, over, it's gone to over a thousand in just a few months, that's over the winter actually. So uh, um, I'm, I'm asking, well, I'm, I'm not sure what you, I think you said that you had uh, tabled the decision tonight. You're not going it to. It will be pulled. Pulled. It will be pulled from the agenda. Yes. Yes. Um, and I didn't quite get. Um, We're going to take a look at it. Just because of the tree issue? Or? Because of the, we've had so much uh, discussion with uh, input from, pe from the residents, and so we're going to take a look at this project again, or the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, um, I'm not sure what um, their issues are, except for uh, I also like leaving the environment as close to its beautiful state as possible. And going along with your monarch butterfly comment, I think that's like crucial because uh, that's what's killing them off is is things that um, that's that destroy the environment. And uh, it also makes uh, the park not as, uh, I like a little wildness. So anyway, um, people come from all over the city for tournaments. Uh, they, they could uh, actually, it might actually even be a way to generate um, some kind of money for the area. I know that businesses benefit when people um, come to these events and um, the health benefits it brings to people. I know of at least two people 
who uh, were told they were terminally ill and uh, through pickleball, it seems as though they're, they're um, defying the doctor's prognosis. You know, the, it's just keeping them healthy uh, longer. So uh, a lot of people depend on this uh, for their very existence, and uh, myself included. Uh, uh, a friend of mine, uh, Ann Schwartz, uh, suggested uh, looking into some of the empty buildings like Xerox and maybe making some indoor facilities for this. Um, I went to Webster Rec recently went to open pickleball and uh, from from reserving a court and a whopping 52 people showed up for to play on eight courts. That means like the 32 that could play and then some, you know, and it, it just the the place was just mobbed, and that was um, two days two days ago. So uh, I guess that's all uh, I had to say. Uh, I just wanted to encourage the the project to go forward, and uh, realizing that this astounding number is just um, is just quadrupling every time I turn around, and I can actually show you the the list if you want to see it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Vicki Odenbach. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, Vicki. How you doing? Uh, Vicki Odenbach. I live on Shadow Pines uh, Drive uh, on the other side of Shadow Lake. Um, so I don't know if this is appropriate now because if you shelled it, I don't know if I should wait for the public meeting, but I'm here, so I might as well just kind of go along with what's been going on the past week or so. And uh, to kind of add to what Jim said, and I know there's been a lot of back and forth, and several groups have expressed interest uh, in the project, and it's not that we don't want the project to stop. We just want to regroup and talk about some of the things that we think make more sense. And um, it's not just for pickleball players, it's for walkers, families, families with children, disc golf players, just to name a few. And there's kind of two scenarios going on here. One is the present plan with the pickleball courts. And I'm happy to say that a lot of the like technical aspects and stuff, you guys have been really good at adapting that to make the courts uh, be the best that they can be. And uh, adding gates, lowering the fencing and that kind of thing. Uh, and then making sure that they um, are up to specs of what the U.S. pickleball people want. Mm -hmm. So that's that's been great. That's part one. Part two is the layout and the overall scope of the 30 acres that we're talking about and that the plan encompasses. It wasn't until I saw the actual plans to scale and looked at the stuff that I realized how much was being cleared and I was kind of shell-shocked. Because I, I think I didn't think about it at first. I knew you would have to cut down trees, but I really didn't understand the scope of what was proposed at the time. And with the vote now going tonight, which now it's not, yeah. but with the vote that we thought was going, we felt it was time to raise our voices. And so that's when we started to um, uh, get people to email in because we really felt this was an important issue. And I know we've come and said some stuff about it, but now it kind of feels like everything's kind of coming to a head and we need to really grab onto the idea maybe and make it clear what we want. And that doesn't mean we're gonna get everything, but um, everybody that I talk to, no matter their interest in the park, the common interest is don't cut the trees down. And that's, that's everybody. I haven't talked to anybody that says, oh yeah, let's cut all the trees down. Um, for me, the issues are a few other issues which I'd just like to go over for when you guys are discussing this. Um, and the first thing is the trees. It's really all about the trees. And we, we realize with the courts and the parking that you're gonna have to clear some stuff, but with the um, with Jim's alternative plan, there are ways to cut down on the clearing of the trees, still going forward with the project and then having time to breathe 
see how that works out and then maybe go forward from there. Um, I don't want to jeopardize the courts in any way. The importance for the trees, though, is, is so significant for the wind protection and the overall aesthetics of the park, and that's what brought me here tonight. It's worth the lane to get it right. Um, the playing fields. I'm, I'm one that don't think we need playing fields there. We have the school with your fields right there. Um, we have Rothfuss a mile and a half up the <coughs> street. And you have Rothfuss, or not Rothfuss, sorry, Greenwood, right up uh, Scribner um, up there. With I know I think there's a couple fields there. So the playing fields, again, and that goes to the clearing to not clear them right now and leave them and then decide in the future where you want to go from there. Um, the playgrounds, there are two at Scribner, one at Greenwood, two at Rothfuss. Um, I don't know if we really need it. Um, if the majority are in favor, then at least let's move them down off of Atlantic Avenue. The security issue with the sheriff was kind of debunked in my, in my opinion. Um, in this day of video cameras and so forth, there's got to be a way that you could set up um, some sort of security to help with the vandalism, because I know there's a vandalism problem um, with things that are kind of tucked back. Um, so I understand that. Um, the basketball and tennis court, we don't I, don't, I don't think we need tennis courts. I don't think the tennis courts that are there are being used even. I can't speak to the basketball. I really don't know about that one, but anyway. Um, and then the idea of phasing this in, of just doing the courts, the bathroom, and the parking right now, and moving it down. Um, I, I am so hoping that you um, embrace the alternative plan, which I think will not only save money, um, but it'll allow it to get moving now, get the courts up and going, and then you can kind of see how people use the park. If you keep the trees so people can picnic and come play pickleball and hang out and do their walking, um, I think that'd be a, such a great way to start. Um, if you cut the trees down, they're gone. And, um, and I, on that note, I hope that you'll incorporate the 2007 tree policy that was given to you, drafted by the Conservation Board. And um, it states that you're supposed to look after the heritage and significant trees and identify them. So can we get somebody to go around to Shadow Pines and identify some of these great trees so that you can look in the future and say, okay, we gotta work around this tree. Let's not just cut them down. And I know that some of it is a, a financial issue with it, um, but I think there are ways to get around that by bringing the path off of um, Atlantic, you've got the path right now on the outside of the trees. You've already got a sidewalk there. So for me, it doesn't make sense to put another pathway there. You've got a sidewalk. And I think the people that come to walk at the park are gonna walk in the park. I don't wanna walk along a 45 mile an hour, noisy trucks, everything road. Uh, and again, what Jim said, keeping the trees on Atlantic. Um, I don't know if he mentioned, I can't remember, that he had an arborist here looking at the trees and was willing to help out and give advice on how to cull out the diseased and the dead trees and then strategically plant other trees to help maintain that buffer. Um, so the trees, so keep the trees. Um, and then one other thing to look at is the adaptive courts. Um, I think it's a great idea. It'll be wonderful to have. I don't know where it went from three to six. Um, who decided? I think it started as two, then went to three, and now it's six. Um, those six courts, because of the increased size, um, really in significantly increased the cost of the courts with the asphalt and everything else. So is that something that we could look at? And would three suffice or not? Um, at the U.S. Pickleball Championships down in Florida, um, some of the pickleball wheelchair um, matches were played on regular courts. So it'll be wonderful to have the adaptive courts, um, but I, and if, if you want to do six, that's fine. I just don't know uh, from a financial stand, if you want to look at cutting costs, that would be one way to do it. Um, so Jim has talked about the alternative plan of moving everything south, and that would save 
so many trees allow the mature trees to stay next to the courts to help with wind protection and I think really keep the the park um, user friendly and not have it like Rothfuss because I think that seems to be with the majority. Um, the petition that the Shadow Pines people sent out were up over 125 people and they're saying keep the trees. So hopefully um, you will take that into consideration and I too thank you for the stuff that you're doing. It's been a long haul um, but I felt like today was a, a very positive move forward that there was finally uh, back and forth uh, between the groups and, and you guys. So hopefully uh, we can continue that and, um, and maintain the park as a park. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, and Mike Heath. Oh, okay. After Mike, after after Mike will go to that phone call. Thank you. <coughs> okay, uh, Mike Heath, 47 Westfield Commons. Uh, Mike, Penfield. I think you have to put your microphone a little up. Okay, uh, Mike Heath, 47 Westfield Commons in Penfield. Um, so uh, I too am concerned about the the trees in in Shadow Pines. Uh, I think uh, you know some of the proposals. Development is, is great and great for the town, um, but mainly I'm concerned with the lack of information about phase one, uh, in particular in regards to the trees. Um, I did write a letter on April 18th that I sent to the board, so I'm not gonna read all that here uh, for time's sake, but uh, um, the, uh, in particular, I'll just point out, you know, one thing. So, you know, the tree preservation policy, and I know that's not a regulation, but uh, uh, some of the information, you know, the lack of information from I see it uh, would be guided some by the policy. Um, and so I'll just read a little bit here. The, the tree preservation policy from the Conservation Board of the Town of Penfield that was adopted September 4th, 2007 in part, the document states tree conservation plans shall be required in conjunction with any development proposal. If the development proposal will result in the removal of trees greater than eight inches uh, diameter of breast height. Uh, in part, the policy also states that a site plan be submitted that shall include identification of the type, size, and location of all existing trees or groups of trees averaging greater than eight inches in diameter on the property. Areas to be left undisturbed are exempted. And identification, this is kind of the important part, identification of those trees proposed for preservation and those design, designated for removal. The tree policy also provides guidance around tree replacement practices. So. I guess I think it would help a lot as as it goes forward, um, as if that information is provided because it hasn't been provided, and so uh, you know, 10 to 15 acres maybe is going to be cleared. Uh, it's not clear that's the right number. There's fields, future fields, so there's just a lack of information. I think that. I'd advise kind of at that when it's presented to have that information shared because I think that that will answer a lot of questions just up front as that's shared and 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 be more efficient with everybody's time. Um, so uh, and in that you know we'd like to know you know what the board is voting on then in that in that you know what is the plan so we, we understand that and we know that you understand that. Um, and you know, then particularly, you know, as we're applying, I guess Penfields are gonna be applying for Tree Town and like Arbor Day is coming up and all this, just that, you know, we're mindful of the trees and you know, some will come down uh, as part of it and we'll like to understand what they are and that, you know, as well when the plan's presented, if, you know, we can understand that, you know, the minimal impact is being made through that plan, that would be great. So thank you all so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you, Mike. <clears throat> Brian, we can go to um, a phone call from, I think we have first um, Ed Linsku on the phone. Maybe. <coughs> I think he's talking. I can't hear. Brian, we're not hearing him. I think he's talking, but we're not hearing him up here. Okay. Sure. Next caller on uh, uh, is Bob Peterson from Clark Road. Hi, I'm here. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? 
Good, Deb. How are you? Good. Go ahead, please. Okay, I tried to send an email in, but it didn't work. Couldn't get through the uh, cap. I'm going to read my email and okay. maybe comment. Five years ago, I voted to spend half a million dollars to save Shadow Pines from development. The intent was to preserve open space, active recreational use, while the natural beauty as possible. Then four years ago, the Shadow Committee provided specific recommendations for the best uses of the property. Um, this committee did not recommend it did, however, recommend them giving in fences. It wanted to save as much of the environment as possible. So the current plan to level, cave, and fence 20 acres of pairs, contrary to the wishes of the majority of the pen, and also contrary to the advice the moratorium and land use studies. So I think it's time to call a timeout and hold a public hearing, get some current input before making these expensive and irreversible. So that's my email, and uh, I'd like to supplement that the, at the time the land use committee met uh, Four years ago, pickleball wasn't even on the radar screen, so it wasn't that pickleball. We didn't even know about it. Uh, tennis was considered, and the um, foundation was. We didn't. It was only one uh, comment coming in, so tennis courts were not on the. Uh, I think you need to go hold this public hearing and get the input of the voters because you're hearing from organized groups, uh, groups such as disc golf, bikers, and pickleballers are all at access to your ear. BME associates seems, oh, I don't know, charge of them, but they seem to be doing the master plan and going out for bids and all of that with I don't know who's in control of that, but I'm starting to wander some. But I really think you need to hold a public hearing and find out what the uh, residents of want. And I, I expect now they do want to. But let's go check and find out what they want. There's a lot of people want space for butterflies and want to see the natural trees and the birds singing and all of that, and just be able to hike and walk not get hit in the head with a disc or a, so, uh, I'll end now but thank you for uh, listening to me thank you Bob appreciate your call Brian do you have Ed on the phone or is that not happening I'm, I'm here can oh, you hear me hey yes Ed welcome thank you for wait, your patience and waiting go ahead well, please well I don't know how you lost me but you did yeah, no uh, I called your office yesterday morning but I didn't get a return call so I thought I'd try again tonight uh, we had a trails committee meeting earlier this evening and one of the items on the agenda was the repair of the Channing Filbert bridges south of uh, uh, Washington Street there. Uh, we want to make sure it gets in somebody's budget. Uh, some of these bridges have been in need of repair for several years and it's not in anybody's budget yet. So. Who would be overseeing this project? So I did get your message, Ed, and I apologize, not getting back to you, back to you but I um, will forward this, uh, speak tomorrow with um, our parks department, and we'll discuss. Well, he's, uh, he's already looked at it. He agrees with us, but we've got to get some funding to to get them fixed because well, it's beyond the Trails Committee capacity to fix them. Sure. Let me talk with them tomorrow. I will, I will get back with staff. With um, with Parks Department and w again with um, with the DPW and, and see where we where we stand on that. Is that fair enough? And I'll get back to you. 
Yeah, yeah, just to get the project moving. We've already had two injuries occur on the on the bridge, and uh, we don't want the town to get sued, of course. Absolutely not. Think it's slippery. Yeah. Uh, the other item is uh, the pass through to the thousand acre swamps. Uh, their committee contacted us when Tony was in office, and uh, they thought it was a good idea. We thought it was a good idea. We just need to know if there's paperwork that has to be in place or we just establish an entrance to the, off of Rothfuss to the Thousand Acre Swamps. They said they would do the work on their side. Uh, so we just need a trail connection there. Okay. And I apologize, but I, I couldn't hear what Ed said, which committee he was talking about. The Trails Committee. The well, he was doing that originally. Is it still the same committee he was saying that he... What was this last part? I'm sorry. With the Thousand Acre Swamp? That's what I didn't... Yeah. Know. Yes. It, it, was, it was their board of directors that said they wanted the entrance to Rothfuss. Okay, Rothfuss, got it. right. I'll have to f follow up with that as well um, on that too, Ed, tomorrow. That would be great. I don't, uh, I don't know if anybody else on the Trails Committee showed up to talk tonight, but I thought I'd better take advantage of the situation. Absolutely. I think there are a couple trail members here tonight, so. I hope they get noisy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Ed. Okay. We'll get back to you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay. I think we're back to... Uh, participation. So I don't have uh, anyone signed up, but I do have an email that came in earlier today to me that uh, and uh, this resident requested this read into the record. Yeah, sure. Okay. Go ahead, please. Okay, this is from Mindy McLaren. Mm -hmm. uh, her letter states, Dear Deputy Supervisor Draw and Penfield Town Council members, I'm writing to address the plan for development of the northeast corner of Shadow Pines property, specifically in regard to the removal of many of the trees currently there. I live roughly three quarters of a mile from this location, and I want to make you aware of the poor air quality in this area of Penfield. Dust from the quarry can be seen in the air on any given day at varying times of day. Uh, exhaust fumes from school buses turning north, diesel trucks turning south to the quarry, and the constant passing traffic can be smelled throughout the day. Diesel exhaust has been shown to be carcinogenic. I have brought this concerning issue up with former Supervisor Sinti and most recently with Council Members Lee and Akadin. I present this information again regarding the roughly 20 acres of shadow pines that will be removed of its trees and to ask you to reconsider this decision. Trees will be needed in that area to mitigate air pollution as well as to provide shade and to block the wind for optimal conditions for racket sports. They will be necessary to make this recreational space truly healthy. With all of the trees now gone at the southeast corner of Scribner Road and Atlantic Avenue, this makes keeping as many trees as possible at Shadow Pines a wiser decision that I hope you, can, you will take into immediate consideration. Thank you. Is there nobody else, is, is there anyone else that signed up to speak? No one else has signed is up to speak. Is there anybody else that, oh, there are quite a few that would like to speak, so. I'll be fair, maybe, Brit Brittany, would you like to come first? Sure. I saw your hand. I That's. I saw your hand first. Please have a seat. Thank you. I will be quick, because uh, I, I, my name is Brittany Jensik. I live at 15 Cassidy Court in Penfield. Um, I will be quick, because I am thrilled that you tabled the vote to send things out to bid. Um, I am not of the uh, pickleball group. I have never played pickleball. I have 21 children at this point in my life. I don't even have time to eat a pickle, much less play pickleball. You should see the reactions behind you now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, we, I, 14 of my children have special needs. I am very much looking forward to the adaptive playground. I am very much looking forward to being able to take a walk and to be in those fields, to be in the trees, to be in the nature that's, uh, that's proposed for that park. My, um, 
you know, my agenda is different than other people's agenda. We certainly have the people that are here for pickleball. We have the people that are here for disc golf. Um, in the last week that some of this has kind of come to light, I've talked with so many people and everybody has different interests in this park. The one thing that I'm hearing over and over and over again and have never heard contrary uh, is that everybody wants the park preserved to be a park. Um, they don't want the trees cut down. So I guess I'm just here tonight to say that there are um, people all in this community that have uh, different interests in this park, but everybody really seems, it seems to be important to everybody to preserve the, the natural aspect of this park for what it is. So I appreciate you again uh, listening, your service, and also uh, tabling this vote tonight. Thank you. And Brittany, can you spell Brittany. your last name, please? J-E-N-C-I-K. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, how about my trails um, committee? How are you? Want to have a seat? State your name. Uh, good evening. My name is Bob Ansaldi. live at 10 Oatsfield Circle. For those of you who don't know me, I am the current chairperson of the Penfield Trails Committee. And before I get started on my other comments, I do want to formally recognize the passing of our previous chairperson, Nels Carmen. He, I know he did a lot for the town overall, but for the Trails Committee, he ran, he was either a member of the Trails Committee ran the trails committee as chairperson for many years and led many, many of the public hikes that we do. So he's certainly gonna be missed from my point of view and I hope the town recognizes that also. We do, very much missed. Um, I came here tonight for the same reason everybody else and I'm actually very happy to hear so many other people talk about the concern of the trees being knocked down. As Ed mentioned, um, we had a trails committee meeting earlier today. Um, that was one of the issues brought up was the concern about losing all the trees um, at Shadow Pines. So I'm glad to hear you're tabling that motion and we'll consider that in the future. I do wonder, you know, does the town have an arborist on contract, on staff for something? Because if the perception is we're just willing to just knock down trees whenever we want. May, that may not be the truth, but that is the perception. So um, I had never heard about this tree policy. Um, it was interesting to hear about it. Um, my wife and I, have been, we've lived in Penfield for since 1987, except for one year. We lived out in Massachusetts. We learned out there, anytime a tree is cut down on public property, that tree had to have a public hearing. Now, it seemed a little bit ridiculous because because they would actually put a sidewalk down the road if there was a tree in the way. The sidewalk would go to the other side of the street, go down farther, and it would go back and forth. So I'm not suggesting it go as far as what Massachusetts had, but we do need to do more to preserve the trees, please. So I would. Um, Thank you, Bob. Thank you. One of the suggestions we have is if there's gonna be a public hearing um, about Shadow Pines, Put up that information about the public hearings on the kiosks at Shadow Pines so that the people are there, mm -hmm. maybe, because yes, there's lots of information on the website, but not everybody sees that. Yeah. Um, I was in exchanging messages with Tim Masterton earlier in the week about putting up information about the um, stream clearing. Mm -hmm. You know, just so that people, because as my wife and I were walking around Shadow Pines, People are like, what are they doing along there? It was just shocking to see how much, maybe it's necessary mm -hmm. for to, to, get, to keep the uh, creeks going. I was also pleasantly surprised to find out that there's a waterfall there. That was one of the benefits of all the clearing. That's so, a secret. Oh, it's Don't not tell a, anybody. Yeah. It, it, was, it was fun to watch, so. Mm -hmm. um, it's beautiful. So, and I guess the last comment, and I, sort of goes contrary to everyone saying, you know, keep everything um, open space and stuff like that. But from a trails point of view, it is very nice that it, there's a very long sections of paved trail for people, senior citizens, people on wheelchairs, stuff like that. So as we're trying to figure out the plan for all the stuff, trying to have a loop, a paved loop um, on the north side 
for people, um, I think it would be helpful. So, um, and the last comment, Debbie, if you need more information about the stuff that Ed mentioned, feel free to reach out to me. I can also talk about the connection from Thousand Acre Swamp or the um, thank bri you. bridge, the bridge issue. The bridge issue. I will. I will tomorrow, Bob. Thank you. Okay. As well. Thank you. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I there was more hands. I guess Tim Tim Murphy. Tim Murphy's next. I see Tim. Uh, good Welcome. evening, Town Board. Tim Murphy, 48 Corral Drive. I came here tonight uh, prepared to share some observations on how we got to this point, but was pleasantly surprised that uh, you know public sentiment uh, got to you first and uh, a deferment was in order. And I think that's the right thing to do. It just deserves some more conversation. Mm -hmm. so, so thank you for that. I mean, I, I think that's terribly important. Bob and Saldi just asked a question that he didn't get an answer for, but I was prepared to ask about as well. I mean, I know Bruce Soretsky was retained by the town for many years as his landscape architect. Is that still the he case? He still is our, our landscape architect. Yeah. So I was with Bruce this actually this week, and I didn't ask him, but mm -hmm. when I, I walked away, I was like, have you been included in any of these conversations? And would it make sense for him to be present or maybe be prepared to talk about some of these topics? Because maybe he has, mm -hmm. you know, access some information about, you know, what trees are worth saving and not. So, so anyway, one of my thoughts was that Bruce Sareski might be a really good resource and it would really be good for him to be here and maybe prepared to, to speak to that topic. Also, it comes up over and over again. Uh, Shadow Pines is not a park, and we have to remember that. It needs to be designated a park at some point, and I think that's an action item we, we don't want to lose sight of. But uh, somewhere down the road, as you know, we we walk this. We should, as as a community, you know, talk about that and make the decision to try to protect that asset. Um, one other thing, just in in terms of preparedness, I mean, totally get the fact that a green field is much easier to, to develop than you know working around trees. So you know, there's been a lot of conversation about clear cutting 32 acres versus 20 acres, but maybe you could come to the table and talk to somebody, and I don't know who, is, who, who could uh, help you with that kind of counsel, but you know, whatever the inverse of a clear cut is, working around the trees, you know, some kind of estimate of cost. You know, if you come back and you find the order of magnitude is two, three, four times because you know, the roots and the rocks and everything are impediments to laying infrastructure, I mean, I think that's an important part of the conversation. And you know, as we thought this through, we're like, geez, we can see why they would want a clear cut, but we don't want that to happen. So what's the alternative, right? You know, and maybe there are routes, and you know, you see plenty of those you dig contractors around staking things out. I mean, could we get somebody that could do some of that work that would give us insight, again, where things are? Um, again, maybe it's not practical with rocks, but you know, Again, if there's any, I know there's a major RG&E gas line that's uh, mm -hmm. yes. right just south of Clark Road mm -hmm. there, and where does that run? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So having all that information maybe before the public information meeting, not that I want to slow things down, but really would you know probably set us up for success to go forward. So hopefully you see it that way. And then second, totally unrelated to the Shadow Pines is just, just a friendly reminder. You have a lot of things on your plate right now with all the development on the 250 corridor, you know, all the stuff we're talking about Shadow Pines, all the money that's been saved to build the DPW barn, all the ARPA money, you know, the money from, you know, Senator Brook. I mean, all of that, I think it would be great to, you know, let us see the light of day. Put it in a spreadsheet. You know, how much money are we talking about that's available to fund these different projects? Again, I've heard different numbers, and again, I complimented you for sharing uh, the Bonadio group, uh, you know, your mm -hmm. financial statement. Mm -hmm. And I wrote down the numbers, and it was like, holy cow, I want somebody to audit me to make sure I understood that there's that amount of money that's in the coffers right now. You know, again, some of it's earmarked, totally get that. Some of it's not. What's available for things like, you know, the Clark House restoration? And also just last thing, and. I've talked to at least one member of the Historic Preservation Committee. Wouldn't it be good for them to maybe take the lead on, on the Clark House properties or at least you know, be a super active member? I mean, isn't that part of their charge? I mean, you folks are kind of shouldering it to this point. 
but you know maybe again you could delegate some of that and you know the prep work or the alternatives could be developed through them so that's just an idea but you know they're out there mm -hmm. and I'm sure they know more than we do about this topic and uh, we'd be great to hear from them and uh, you know maybe they could lead us forward okay, okay? thank you Tim thank you appreciate it is there any anybody before I go to Jim is there anybody new yes sir Hi, my name is Jay Coughlin. I live at Two Farm and Ham Drive. Um, I'm all for the uh, for the pickleball course coming in. We we designated the money out and all that. But I'm also in favor of keeping as many trees as we can. So I'm in favor of the ultimate plan that Jim has put forward. Um, if we continue trying to call for hearings and hearings and hearings, we're never going to get anything done. We've already had meetings regards this. We had uh, 100 people the last time we had uh, mm -hmm. sayings on this. Um, you're not going to please everybody, um, but I think you will please a majority of the people uh, in Penfield that would use this area. So I'm just, my only thing is let's move forward, but let's move by saving as many trees as we can. Thank you, sir. I think that's really important to, to emphasize. It's, there's not going to be 100% happiness once right. we're done you know and it's it's just human nature we can't please everyone but we don't rule with an iron fist up here I think there's just enough feedback and collaboration and like many of you said it was worth pausing and then regrouping and I think it would be helpful to kind of level set the expectations for the hearing I know Mr. Frum you have additional thoughts but just so that people know what to expect what we're planning the information that's going to be shared with the public and that this is really well, part of the effort of, of an ongoing conversation. I think we'll take that back and, and get a and get a dates get some dates together and, and get a possible work back we'll get back to staff and get back to everybody. I need to really regroup and mm -hmm. and, and get some find out what we need to do as far as set up a public hearing and, and how much of this plan we can um, we can get reworked be in and shown to the public now and then at our at sure. address and so forth onto that. Okay, but but I think it's fair to say it's not going to be happening in the next no. two weeks. Oh, that, is that so what it, it for sure it? will not Absolutely. be scheduled in May because there are some items that we have to take back. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll it will be a little bit. We'll have to take that to get it back to and have our um, town engineer um, get together with our um, with our de developer and so forth and and get some dates that we can all get together on. Okay, but, so. but you know, like the gentleman said, it, it's not going to be intentional delay, no. but we're, there are items that we have to prepare Absolutely. as part of the presentation, mm -hmm. and then um, figures and modifications that we'd like to share. So we're thinking hopefully by June um, or shortly thereafter. I would... I wouldn't that's, wanna, that's I wouldn't want to put a, um, a date on it. I mean, a time. Oh, I, I, I understand, but just for for expectations, right? Expectations. So that definitely in not next. in May, folks. Absolutely. I think, wouldn't it be fair to say that it would be akin to the type of a public hearing you'd have for a site plan application, maybe before the planning board? That type of a public sure, hearing. Sure. Absolutely. Not, not an open forum to say what are we going to do with Shadow Pines. It's really going to be this is the part of the project that we're looking to mm -hmm. develop. Here's an engineered site plan. This is where we think we want the courts to be. This is where we want to save trees and whatnot. And and I think that's what I would recommend. The, the nature of the public hearing. So. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, Sure. Hi. Uh, well, wait, Jim. Could I um, <laughs> one <laughs> before you go. How are you? Come sit down. Madam Supervisor, after that, you do have some online submissions. Oh, wait, okay. I didn't see them. Sorry. Go. Hi, oh, I'm Francis. Francis, Francis thank you. Three bittersweet circle. Um, I just wonder, and, and this might be presumptuous, but um, if you're going to be talking about pickleball courts. Is there someone with a pickleback, pickleball background? Like I heard that some of you have been in Florida and other places who have played in group courts. Um, and maybe they, they don't, I'm not asking them to have a huge say in what's going on, but at least feedback in what the pickleball community sees as a setting. 
So if there's one person that could be at least an advisor for that before uh, the pickle bar aspect of it is done. Okay, thank you, Francis. Thank you. Appreciate it. Brian, I'm not seeing the online submission. Thank you. I just tried to refresh. I'll take I'll take Jim Froome if one more time. If, if, do you have something new to say, Jim? Yes. Hopefully, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate hear, seeing you and I hearing your. I know. Told us age. Because I love to hear from you, but just as long as. Uh, just two things. The first simple thing is um, this. This came up a lot. I want to say the last two weeks this issue has kind of been bubbling up as we've been playing outside and all the pickleball people are saying, hey, what's up with this, what's up with that? I've probably talked about 40, 40 people in the last couple of weeks just playing. And one of the things is um, as you go forward, I, I, I would request that just like you have in the um, – uh, lobby here, you have all the pictures of the, the new, you know, f get, get pictures up. Um, I know that this board asked a couple times to see the overlay of the mm -hmm. BME on the thing, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure I've been to every meeting that you've talked about pickleball or watch it online, and I don't believe you guys ever saw it until just recently. Yeah. Um, and it was very apparent to those of us who were doing our own that, you know, there was a lot of, the, you know, that, that tree line along Atlanta was going to be gone. So just, just a, I guess um, a request is as you come up with things you're really looking at, put a visual for us. Yes. Um, and then the second thing is, that this is just regurgitating, but um, on Bob Peterson's call in about complaining about the not wanting any development on the thing, this has been gone over for two years. Um, and when I foiled uh, all the comments on the pickleball courts, and I can't remember, it might have been for ARPA, but you know, in the last year or so, uh, there were three comments on the, on the pickleballs. Uh, one was against pickleball there, one was against using ARPA funds for pickleball, and one was, well, I, I'd like to see them somewhere else, but you know, if they gotta be there, they gotta be there. So in, in all the meetings you've had, and one of the things I keep telling people is, this stuff's been out here for a couple of years. Just nobody's paying attention between COVID and everything, and you know nobody's at your meetings. But you guys have been doing your job, okay? Um, <laughs> Thank you. Know, you. <laughs> no, and, and and you know, um, I, I think we don't need to rehash all that. It's 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 like let's move forward as quickly as we can. Uh, people asked me this week, are you trying to kill the project? And I said, no, we've been fighting for pickleball courts. We just wanted, we'd like to get it done right. So that's all just, um, just wanted to reiterate that there's only two or three people complaining about that. Let's move on and if you can get the visuals for us, it helps people see what you're, what you're talking about. We've asked for that as well, so you know, but working out the costs for that, but. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Jim. And you just have a couple, and thank you, Brian, for these, um, but they came up on emails. One from a Karen Yatu on uh, Sawmill Drive. Come and see the back nine of Shadow Pines. So many trees have been cut down that people don't see because they only go to the front nine. And then another one from a Lauren on Penfield Road. Pickleball courts. Since Rothfuss is already a flat field, why not put pickleball courts there? It seems like a good use of the parkland that is currently hard to utilize. And the last one was uh, from Barbara Jean Sarah. Um, Please keep Shadow Pines as rustic as possible. It is so beautiful currently. Um, so that's it uh, for the uh, online submissions. Seeing no one else online. And anybody else that hasn't spoken that wanted to... Get a chance to speak tonight. If not, forever hold your peace till next, <laughs> till our next meeting. So we thank you again for all, for coming as well. Appreciate all your support and oh yes, sir. I'm sorry. Would you like to come? Saying thank you. Oh thank you. Oh thank you. Thank you. And we do appreciate you. And we I, I guess the, on behalf of the board, you know, we we've heard you as as mentioned, as Councilman Lee mentioned, we have heard you, and we are. We, we do know that we work for you, so we thank you um, for coming. 
tonight. So I'll move on after uh, if, uh, to additions, deletions to agenda um, board. Any adi uh, uh, additions? Yeah. Oh. I, I do have one addition uh, tonight. It'll be resolution 23T-123. Moved by, right. second. Moved by um, Bob and second, uh, Councilperson um, Ockett and seconded by Councilman Cole. Um, can we have a roll call vote on that? I don't. Do oh, I don't need a vote roll call, but I apologize. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. You have before you board the March 29th. Um, we're, we're done? I'm sorry. No, you're not, they're not part of this. Just keep going. You closed it. We, we did close the public participation. Did you? She just had a quick question. I a follow-up of what we just said. Uh, um, email. Yeah. Is that okay? Thank, thank you, Francis. And then it's going to be part of the record anyway, you know, fully what you say. Have they stopped the back nine cutting of the trees? Uh, I'm, I'll have to get a, I'll get an answer to you tomorrow. I, I, I didn't, I don't know that what this is relate, what she was relating to on this email, if that's what you're talking about. Emailers or speakers had had said that they had already the one you just read said that they were cutting down yeah, trees on the back. I suspect it's the stream area. Yes. Clearing. Where they're close. I'll have to get uh, clarification on that. That's just really scary. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to move the minutes. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. I'll second that. Thank Se you. Thank you. A roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hockaden. Aye. Four eyes. Thank you. Um, next on the uh, any um, board members next on the uh, received any petitions this month? No. Seeing none. Uh, well, I, I think we should note the petitions that are circulating online with respect no, to. No. No. Only ones that we have. The, the town board has received. We have not received any petition. We have not. A per, uh, we have received so, it to us. Okay. I, I understand that, but I think it warrants noting. Thank no. you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next, um, we have resolutions by function. Um, and here we go, uh, law and finances first, Madam Clerk. Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a fence within a storm sewer easement at 157 Milford Crossing. Um, so moved. Second. Um, so the town of Penfield hereby authorizes the supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement with Andrea and Jason Deshaies, owners of the property at 157 on Milford Crossing, to permit a portion of a fence to encroach into the stormwater easement uh, located at 157 Milford Crossing in a form and substance acceptable to the town attorney. Thank you. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a fence within a storm sewer easement at Five Stone Hollow Drive. So moved. Second. This is another where the town of Penfield authorizes the supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement with Matthew and Megan Weaver, the owners of a property at Five Stone Howell Drive, to permit a portion of a fence to encroach into the storm sewer easement in the town of Penfield, located at Five Stone Howell Drive, in a form and substance acceptable to the town attorney. Thank you. Again, this was discussed at our work session. Um, any discussion? Roll Draw. call vote. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement to allow a generator within a storm sewer easement at 38 Pond Valley Circle. So moved. Second. Uh, the town of Penfield again authorizes the supervisor to sign a license and hold harmless agreement with Justin and Carrie Goldstein, the owners of a property at 38 Pond Valley Circle, to permit a portion of a generator to encroach into the storm sewer easement uh, located at 38 Pond Valley Circle in a form and substance acceptable to the town attorney. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. 
setting a public hearing for a special permit and preliminary final site plan approval to allow the construction of a 3,400 square foot plus or minus new building to house a Pets at Peace facility located at 1401 Empire Boulevard. Uh, so moved. Second. An application's been received by the town of uh, Benville Town Board for the issuance of a special permit and site plan approval, um, which would allow the construction of a new 3,440 square foot building to house the Pets at Peace facility located at 1401 Empire Boulevard, located in the in LaSalle's Landing uh, Development Zoning District. The ten town, Penfield Town Board is best suited to act as lead agency within the meaning of the of seeker. And and be it resolved that the public application has been classified as a type two action pursuant to uh, seeker and the requirements uh, have been satisfied uh, and be it further resolved that the town board uh, shall hold a public hearing at the Penfield Town Hall on June 7th at 6.30 p.m to consider the said application and to hear all persons interested in providing comment in this matter. A uh, legal notice of this public hearing has been published at least once in the, in the official newspaper of the town and not less than 10 nor more than 20 days before this date set. Uh, for the hearing. A copy of the public notice shall be available at the town hall as prescribed by law. Thank you, any discussion? Roll, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization for supervisor to sign a contract with MRB Group for professional design services so for moved. a new DPW garage facility. So moved. Second. Be it resolved that the supervisor is hereby authorized to sign a contract not to exceed $1,220,000 for services with MRB Group to provide professional design services for the new DPW garage facility. This resolution and the proposal submitted by MRB Group shall constitute the contract, which shall be reviewed and approved by the town attorney. Be it further resolved that the town board approves appropriation of such amount from the assigned general fund balance as an amendment to the 2023 budget for these services. We've had much discussion about this and I'm happy to see that we're, we're actually moving ahead with this facility, well, much needed facility um, for our town. So roll, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. Appointing members to the Clark Road Barn Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. Whereas the Penfield Town Board approved the formation of a Clark Road Barn Advisory Committee at its meeting held on March 15th, and whereas the town solicited citizens to submit their interest in serving on this committee and received submissions from several individuals, now therefore be it resolved that the town board appoints the members listed in the addendum and be it further resolved that the town staff from key departments also serve on the advisory committee as listed in the addendum. The committee's charge will be deemed completed upon the town board's acceptance of the advisory committee's final written findings and recommendations. I would note that we that this committee is going to be comprised of nine residents. We received um, applications from non-Penfield residents, but felt that out of um, equity and uh, recognizing that residents have um, a greater interest and in, um, participation in the committee, accepted all of the residents from Penfield. So all persons that applied have been accepted because we appreciate, again, the feedback and felt that everyone that wanted to participate should participate. There are additionally six town staff and several subject matter experts. I'll also note that the meeting for this, the first meeting for this committee has been scheduled for, uh, will be scheduled for May 15th. Thank you so, and I see Mr. Heath is in the audience and he's one of the a volunteer here for this committee. So again, we thank you for your, for your service to this committee. Um, roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. Awarding a contract for the construction of a bypass sanitary sewer from State Road to Stonebridge Subdivision. So moved. Second. Whereas the town desires to construct a 12-foot bypass sanitary sewer to connect from State Road to Stonebridge Subdivision in the town of Webster, whereas the town board approved resolution number 11T-125 approved the incentive zoning for Abington Place and the site approval for 99 single family homes and whereas the town 
shall collect $500 for every building permit and deposit these monies in a trust and agency fund designated the Webster Relief Sewer Fund for such improvement in the town of Webster, and the town board has allocated the remaining funds to come from the sewer collection service account for this project. Whereas sealed proposals were sought and duly advertised for the project as outlined herein, and on May, excuse me, March 24th at 11 a.m., sealed proposals for said project were received, opened, and read publicly by the town clerk. And whereas the bid submitted by 104 Contractors Inc. was evaluated and was found to be the lowest responsible and responsive bidder for these specified improvements and has met the town's bidding requirements. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the contract for this project be awarded to 104 contractors for the total amount not to exceed $66,732, be it further resolved that the said award is subject to submission and approval of required insurances, at which time the contractor will be given the notice to proceed. Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockaden. Aye. Four ayes. Authorization to the auction surplus equipment on May 13th, 2023 at the 38th annual Palmyra Government Surplus Auction. So moved. Second. Whereas the Director of Public Works has identified a list of equipment as surplus and available for public auction, and the town supervisor. Sorry, does this have to be the deputy town supervisor? Does it not matter? Oh, I. I guess it should say the deputy town supervisor. Uh, Madam Clerk, I am uh, recognizing sure. in the second whereas paragraph yep. mm -hmm. that it needs to um, authorize the deputy town supervisor uh, to be granted the authority to amend this list <laughs> along with the director of public works prior yep. to the final designation of, of surplus equipment. Therefore, be it resolved that the following list of equipment be declared surplus, surplus and the DPW be and hereby uh, is authorized to enter into an agreement to auction such equipment as described herein. I will note that some of this equipment um, includes um, dump trucks with plows and salters with at least uh, an age of at least 10 years mm -hmm. in circulation. These have been identified as either um, needing intensive repair or requiring funds that um, maybe may exceed the value worth the repair. It includes pole saws, chop saws, and blowers that have been determined to be surplus. I'll also note that the voting machine that will be part of this was donated by the County of Monroe and no longer serves a purpose in the town of Penfield. So in an effort uh, to be aware of our budget and finances, we've identified um, those equipments that have zero value or zero utility currently to the town for auction. Yes, thank you. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadin. Aye. Four ayes. Resolution 23T-119, as we all know, has been withdrawn. So 23T120, authorization to advertise for sealed proposals for a stream stabilization project for Allen's Creek. So moved. Second. Whereas the town board supports the Allen's Creek stabilization project and the need to create more stable stream conditions in this area. And whereas the town board has been working with Barton and I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher that name. Barton and Lejudis. That's Thank okay. you. For many years on the study's stream analysis and plans for the stabilization project, and whereas all of the required permits from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation and the United States Army Corps have been obtained for this project, and whereas the town board discussed the project at its work session on October 12, 2022, and whereas the town board, acting as lead agency pursuant to Seeker, classified this proposal as an unlisted action, and reviewed the environmental assessment form and subsequently made a determination of non-significance and adopted a negative declaration for this proposal on October 19, 2022. And whereas the town has since completed a site walkthrough and public information meetings with all of the neighbors and stakeholders involved. Now therefore be it resolved that the town engineer be and hereby is authorized to advertise in the manner prescribed by law for sealed proposals for this stabilization project. The bids 
uh, shall be received at the office of the town clerk until Friday, June 9th at 11 a.m., at which point they will be read, opened and read publicly. <laughs> Thank you, and I want to thank um, Mark Valentine, our, our town engineer, um, and I, I was happy to be able to walk up, do the site walk with the neighbors on this project that, that's going to affect their, um, their, their yards, their adjacent to the Ellens Creek. Um, he did a wonderful job with him and his staff, so I know that this will be a project that's been long in the waiting, um, trying to get the DEC approval for this, so we're happy that we're able to get this um, underway, so thank you. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Hockenden. Aye. Four ayes. Award contract for the 2023 through 2026 emergency call out services as needed by the authorized official. So moved. Second. Whereas sealed proposals were requested for emergency call out services of properties that may become abandoned, neglected, and or otherwise inadequately maintained and or unsecured by the owner thereof in accordance with the applicable property maintenance code requirements of the town of Penfield. And whereas on, April, on Friday, April 14th, 2023, a sealed proposal was received from emergency enclosures and was read publicly by the town clerk. And whereas emergency enclosures was the only quote received that met the requirements set forth in the specifications for emergency call out services for calendar years 2023 through 2026. Now therefore be it resolved that the Penfield Town Board hereby awards the bid to emergency enclosures, Lake Avenue, Rochester, New York. Be it further resolved that the Town of Penfield will include a 25% administrative fee for each service provided and said fee will be charged to the property receiving the required maintenance service. Thank you, any discussion? Roll call vote please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Ockenden. Aye. Four ayes. Thank you. Authorization for supervisor to sign recreation contracts. So moved. Second. This resolution authorizes the deputy town supervisor to sign 35 contracts. And this is all dealing with the summer. I mean, they start out um, all the uh, events at the Ample Theater mm -hmm. and the different um, groups that are going to participate in the parade, Independence Day, going all the way through Taste in the Blues, and as well as some programs that are taking place that you can read about in your recreation brochure that recently came out. Fireworks in here, Ms. Yes, uh, so. Council Person okay. Cole. Yeah, that's and important. It's there very important. Fireworks. <laughs> very good. <laughs> Most important. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any discussion? Roll call <clears throat> vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. New business, uh, we get to, or I'm sorry, we get to old business first. Is there any old business board? Seeing none, any new business, there is new business, please. Adopting the Monroe County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2023 update. So moved. Second. Whereas the Town of Penfield Town Board recognizes the threat that natural hazards pose to people and property within the Town of Penfield. And whereas the Town of Penfield has prepared a multi-hazard mitigation plan, hereby known as the Monroe County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2023 update in accordance with the Disaster Mitigation Act of 2000. Whereas the Monroe County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2023 update identifies mitigation goals and actions to reduce or eliminate long-term risk to people and property in the Town of Penfield from the impacts of future hazards and disasters. Now therefore be it resolved by the Town of Penfield that section one, in accordance with local rule for adopting resolutions, the Town of Penfield Town Board adopts the Munner County Hazard Mitigation Plan 2023 update. This plan approved by the community may be edited or amended after submission for review, but will not require the community to readopt any further iterations. This only applies to the specific plan and does not absolve the community from updating the plan in five years. Great, thank you, any discussion? Something we have to do with the county. Roll call vote, please. Draw. Aye. Cole. Aye. Lee. Aye. Akadem. Aye. Four ayes. Thank you. Um, there is no executive session tonight. Um, our next meeting of the legislative meeting will be June 7th, right here at 6.30. So with that, I will call this meeting over at 7.58. PM. Thank you very much. Have a nice, n nice evening. Enjoy your spring. It's coming soon, I think. When? <laughs>